coming right there. Oh, hey guys, uh, welcome back Tactical Rifleman. We are going to get into breaking down this fine gentleman's get home bag. All right, it's gonna be a great video. However, before we do, I wanna give a big shout out to our sponsors. You know, we can't get you guys these high quality videos without support because you guys aren't paying for them, which means I have to. Hey team, this video is sponsored by 80% Arms. This is my EDC pistol made by, that's right, 80% Arms. They are uh, proudly made in the United States of America. They've got 80% ARs and 9mm 5.56 308. They've got jig sets. They've got 80% Glock kits, all right, you build them at home. They're incredibly precise. They're ridiculously easy to make. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. You can check it out at 80percentarms.com. All right, hey gents, um, you know, you, I'm always wanting to bring in subject matter experts. Um, I bring in Chad Mormon for doing some things. I bring in Instructor Z for some things. I bring in Emery for s certain subjects, all right? Uh, but when I did my bug out bag video, which is, that was the title of it, but it's more like a get home right. bag video. For me, I call it my red bag of woe. That video actually did very, very well, but I don't consider myself a subject matter expert when it comes to your prepper survivalist side of the realm. I, I don't mind helping out with it, but let's go to the expert. So who do you go to? Randy Wurst, survival expert, more geared towards the military though. For the civilian side of the house, um, I would say like, well, you know, my favorite series of post-apocalyptic books was this series called Home. And on the title it says, A American. Lo and behold, right here, I have got Chris go. Weatherman the author of that series of books. Now, he literally is the subject matter expert on this stuff. This is his entire life. He's not mm -hmm. just an author that pulls this stuff out of his tail to put a series together. This is what he lives and breathes. And uh, Chris, uh, thank you so much for coming on with us. I'm and, glad uh, to be here and I'm glad you guys came down. Yeah, it's been, no, been a hoot. We've had some fun. We've done some fun stuff the really last have. few days. We really have. It's been good, been but, real good. So who's your partner in crime? Man? So this is this is my good buddy Russ Sawyer. Russ uh, is he's a he's an Air Force vet first, and but he was a, he's been around since I was writing on a forum online. Like he was one of the guys reading as I posted every day or every other day mm. a piece of the, the first book. More book. More book. More that was what book. they used to show. M O A R book. And uh, and he's he's just been around since then. We became friends on the forum, and now he 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 does moderation for me on Facebook and things like that, and websites, and helps me out. And him and his lovely wife, Teresa, just happened to come down for a visit. All right, Same so time you did. This bag, being that he's been following you the whole time, this thing should be textbook Stellar. perfect. Stellar. What are the Stellar. odds of that? Now here's the Zero deal. To you, none. you know the Zero deal. Zero to none. <laughs> you can't buy you can't you can buy pre-made bags, but understand that none of them are any good. They're really not. Uh, they nope. need to be customized to, to you. your situation. Yes. Um, and that's what we're gonna get into, uh, except Brother, sometimes I just need to step back and let you let the magic flow. All right, so I'll tell you what, uh, start where you want, and you, you don't hold your tongue and say, do this. I want you to defend your decisions on this. Yeah, because every, uh, every piece of bad kid, I'm just going to do like that. I mean. Yeah, like, <laughs> remember, I'm old and frail. You're going to be the one picking it up. So. Guys, angry American tearing apart potentially your uh, get home bag. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be awesome. Yes, yes, we can do this. So, so this is what exactly for you? What do you, you know, people call them get home bags, bug out bags, inch bags, it's, red bags of woe, yeah. which is a new one. It's I'm just sure. a little bit of everything. Um, my wife and I, we usually uh, travel together, and her bag is set up very similar to mine. We try to standardize as mm -hmm. much stuff as we can. Good. And um, this is a, a, a new ruck I bought just before I came down here, so I haven't really tested it at all. But you know, we go to Charleston, you know, we come down here, we mm -hmm. go to Montana, yeah. we just want something. Montana would be a hell of a walk. It would be one hell of a walk. But, you know, being in the military, I've got friends along the way, hopefully I can get in touch with them. So what's this thing weigh? Have you ever weighed it? Uh, no, uh, I say heavy. I'm gonna say, not too bad, 45 maybe? Well, about 45 pounds maybe. So it's got some, definitely got some weight to it. It does. And now, looking at this, and I, I see your hydration bladder. Is there water in it now? No. 
So this is dry weight? That's dry weight. And how much water do you plan to carry? Um, the hydration bladder, and, and then I have life straws. And uh, Do you have any other water containers in here? Yes. Do, okay, cool. All right. So, and this does everything for you, right? So you've got food, water, shelter. Correct. Fire kits. Fire kits, first aid, uh, backup ammo. There's a uh, AR-7, modern AR-7. Oh, actually, little, a little rifle in here? A little rifle in there. All right. Uh, one set of clothes, just in case I'm running around in shorts. I got a pair of jeans, right. socks, a long sleeve shirt. I usually wear Merrells, so that's not there much of an issue. Um, this bag right here is one of the, you know, the drop and go. Yeah, you can tear it off. Yeah, tear it off yep. and put that around my waist. That way, if I have to drop the big rug for whatever reason, that holds a lot of just the normal everyday so stuff. So you would consider this your tier one then because yes. you're not carrying your pockets full. All right. Basic stuff like you're saying. No. This, is, this isn't bad at all because quick and easy, combat gauze, poncho, and, and, and this is something right here that I think enough people don't carry, actually, and it sounds silly, but for me, when I'm in the woods and stuff, a bandana is one of the handiest things in the world. Um, if you're out foraging for food, you can use it, and it sounds silly, but you unfold this, if we're out here on the ground, you unfold this and lay it out in front of you if you're going to be doing something. Now you have a little bit of workspace. You don't lose your stuff in the leaves. It doesn't get lost. And I know that's just a drive-on rag right there. Right. And some hot hands. You don't live in Florida. No, but I do visit Montana. <laughs> and a GI compass. A Bruton. Nice. Have you, uh, have you checked this for declination? I have not. What is declination uh, right now? That's a good question. Mm, I had to pull it up do your homework, GPS. folks. Changes every year. Changes every year. And some paracord. You cannot have enough of this. No. I have little bets of that all over the place in here. What, what is that? That is um, it's just a hook with um, some string that I could use to like put up a uh, part of a tarp. Or, okay. Uh, I right. also have uh, mosquito netting in here. Okay. I would get heavier. Yeah. Bank line. Okay. Only suggestion there. Yep, chem light, awesome. And everybody's favorite. You know, last year you could have sold that for a lot of money. I know. I know. A lot of money. I had people, I had offers. We're looking at bulk too here, so what's this? Okay. And some knives and a fire and, steel. And those knives. Oh, that's I mean, right. These are your yeah, little gig things yeah. too. You might want to show those. I'm going to, I'm stacking tools. Another chem light. Because you know, you, I mean, you're you were Air Force, but you wore combat arms. I was. So, but you know the old the old Adam or the old um, adage then that ounces equal pounds. Yeah. And pounds, pounds equal pain. Equal pain. There we go. <laughs> and all of us, myself included, are going to be guilty of carrying too much stuff. I guarantee every one of you are too. Um, so, anything that we can do for bulk weight, and if we can have items that are going to serve more than one purpose to consolidate things down, Absolutely. that's what we want to do. And so I know you're carrying these because they can be attached and used like as a gig. So these things are sharpened both sides and you can use them as a gig. Um, I like the idea of this for sure, but I don't know that I'd carry three of them. Right. And I'd lose this. Right. Again, bulk. This doesn't look like much, but when you take these out, it don't weigh much, but that's probably an ounce and a half. Ounce and a half. So right there, and we're already working on our first pound. Same thing, I would even get rid of this. If the leatherman tools here is fine, lose the pouch, it's bulk, and again, now we're adding, right. now we're up to, to two ounces, you know. Oh, yeah. And it sounds silly, but these are the things you do. When, when you look at guys that do, like Carl likes to do, eco challenges and things right. like that, there's endurance rate, they cut the tags off their clothes. Oh, yeah. Like, they cut everything off. Um, so every bit of it does add up over time. So I like the, I like the, that this can be broke off. Um, I would. So what I would do is, you know, if we had to do this, I would take this, take it off, put it around my waist, secure it around my waist, and then put the ruck on. And so this is a fire kit I'm taking? All right, good. This is what kit. I was just going to ask. So good, good. And we've got some uh, fat wood, I'm guessing it is? Well, no, it's actually, um, what's the name of this? Oh, this yeah. is impregnated and... Yeah, it's okay. like a little honeycomb type yep. thing, but it, it lights. They lighten the go. Yeah. Good. And, good deal, Bic lighter. Everybody needs to have a Bic lighter. Light my fire, and then cotton ball Vaseline, is that yes, what that sir. is? Perfect. And see, this should be in your tier one. This should be like That's what you have on your body, you know? 
So when you put your ruck on, I would take this off, strap it around your waist. Yep. That way, if, if something happens and you got to take off running, you can drop the ruck and take this bag. Okay. You know, it's just a way to make sure you have something on you. With that thought in mind, so what do we have in here? We got the ability, if we need to, to make a quick shelter, right? Correct. We can filter water. Yep. We've got some tools. We even got some light here, some TP, a little bit of first aid. You can do navigation with it and your backup ammo because you'll be carrying, you'll be wearing your pistol on the holster, right? Correct. So, um, the only thing that I would add into there in some capacity, it would either be a piece of heavy duty aluminum foil or even a, you go to a, go to the grocery store and buy like a small aluminum pie pan. Right. Fold it up. Okay. And stick it in there. Now you have a metal container too. You can oh, boil water there in. There you go. You can do that kind of thing. Right. So, for that quick little ditch bag, that's not too bad at all. Um, Oh, and here's your flashlight. So yeah, I mean it's fairly solid for for on your person. And I like the, the little. This is uh, is this best glide. Is that where you got that? Yeah. Or is that just off a cane pole? Yeah, that's just for a cane pole. Okay. All right. And there's one small pair of scissors. Yep, little pair of scissors. Because, but does your Leatherman tool have scissors on it? No. Okay. It has uh, the crimp area, but it doesn't okay. have scissors. All right. We'll that's slide. just the we'll basic slide. Leatherman. Then I got the spork. Yep. Got to have something to eat with. Better than uh, using your fingers. Oh, absolutely. But I'd get rid of the carabiner. Again, so it, little things, but every little piece, every single piece adds up. Because, you know, I mean, I had a ruck one time that I packed, and I'm like, this is the ultimate ruck. This will do everything. And it weighed 85 pounds. Is that the one you brought to the house? <laughs> no. <laughs> that only one only weighed 65 pounds. <laughs> but that ruck was designed for me to be able to do like what Morgan did and walk 250 right. miles to get home. Oh, absolutely. So. Um, little pouches on the side that actually were off of a different... Um, ruck system, and this basically in this one is clothes. Change of clothing. Change of clothing. Good deal. Um, toiletries. Yep. How many pairs of socks you got? Uh, two. Two in there. All right. Change of clothes, toiletries. Yep. Uh, so in here, because I know you got, you know, you're a um, transplant recipient, yeah. so meds and seven, things like that are seven years. Seven years. So what I don't see in here is two things: one foot powder. Okay. And two Vaseline. Okay. Um, it has a you know anytime you get a hot spot or something like that, Vaseline yeah. can fix that. Plus Absolutely. it can you know chapstick. It can do everything because you have chapstick. Right. But like Vaseline, plus you can use Vaseline and you can use your chapstick for fire starting that yep. sort of stuff. Uh, and a foot powder because you know oh, yeah. you were you were yeah. You know I don't have to tell you. And then yeah, two pairs of good socks and wool being the smart choice for sure. And like you said, a change of clothes. So. And the thing is too, is these are nice to have, but we really could do without every bit of this. One thing, one recommendation I'd make here, I'd lose that because you're carrying these. Right. So again, now we can lose these washcloths. That's going to be three or four ounces. Well. And use this instead. The wife packed that for me. <laughs> and she's going to have a washcloth and by she's God. She's going to have a washcloth by God. Because uh, uh, this one. Jeans. Another little first aid kit we put together in okay. jeans, trying to s sort the weight out. Let's see what this looks like. Just a pair of jeans, heavy dungarees, uh, Carhartts, I believe. All right. Tourniquet and gloves. I like the Germex Pepto pills. What's that, ibuprofen? Yeah. Yep. Oh, Tylenol for me. Yep. So. There you go. Yeah, Tylenol. So, yeah. This is one thing I think enough people neglect, and it sounds silly. Um, but you go spend enough time in the woods where you, you're out of the civilized world. I'm not one to bite my nails. I can't do that. I just, I can't. Yeah. Um, but the small pair too, to keep your fingernails trimmed up. Uh, cause if you're like me, I got a perpetual hangnail in one. As yeah. soon as it grows a little bit, it'll break. Absolutely. But yeah, basic little first aid kit. Tweezers. Tick tweezers and yeah. an eyeglass repair kit. Good call. Yeah. Since you both wear glasses. Yes. So, but I'm curious, what do you have this in here for? Just um, out of this curiosity. is more of a constriction bandage. Okay. Um, you know, so back, if you need to use that uh, yeah, to hold something in place. Yeah. Back in the day, a um, hundred years ago when I was a Boy Scout, they talked about snake bites and they said use a constriction bandage. Yeah. You know, just helps not necessarily cut off the blood circulation, but slow to it down. slow it down. Yeah. So. Well, they've changed and, philosophies on snake bites. Oh yes, they have. Dramatically over the years. The only other thing I would say on this is this tin's perfect, but see if, if you could find something mm, waterproof. And well, waterproof and in a bag again lighter, you know, because weight is everything, you know, and that's the one thing we never think about. 
paracord, a couple garbage bags. How many garbage bags are here? 15? Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> ask, ask the wife. That's they my... have uses, but again, what are we, you know, right. what are we, we weigh in here? I don't know how many um, should put in there. And then some paracord. What I, one of the things that, that I like to do with paracord is take it and cut it into, say, 10 to 15 foot lengths right. and have a whole bunch of them because that way you're not having to cut it in the field right. and you just you can toss them out, you can do whatever you need to do. Okay. But paracord, obviously, is a, a must. Let's go, like, what else go we over got to this here? side and then we'll, we'll get this last pouch here and then we'll... Then we'll get into the big, get into the the big, big stuff. boy. Again, a couple more, more yeah, rags. Couple more. But again, now see what we've got. We've got twice bulk yeah. weight and yeah. everything that we had before. And it doesn't sound like much, but right. again, it is. Uh, These, they, they have to be there. And another, and another fire little fire circuit. Okay. You know, two separate yep. places for it. Yep. Um, that's it there. But you have a match case? Yes. So uh, you have... It's got a Strike Anywhere matches in it. Two ferro rods, okay. Yeah. All right. And eventually I'll have another. Yeah, well, yeah, you will. <laughs> They're here. Actually. They are here. The All first right. ones burned. Yes, they did. But not the magnesium. Yeah, that was, was weird. Yeah, just the handles. <laughs> and yeah. the ferro rod on them not. burned right off the magnesium bar. You would have thought that fire that magnesium would have burned. All At least right. not all of it did. And chow time. Chow time. Okay. You got to have my coffee. Got to have your coffee. Okay. Interesting kit. And a gun cleaning kit. Yep. Yep. Uh, two hats, one little boonie hat, one, and one boonie, little, little trucker hat. Little trucker hat. One thing on, on, on this, one thing I would say is if you're, and, and this is one that I'm torn over myself, if you're in a survival situation where you're trying to walk home, if you're shooting your gun enough that you need to stop and clean it, you're not going to make it home. Yeah, exactly. And so this is really something we could do without. This would be right. to deal with later. If anything, a very small bottle of some CLP or right. something like that. And, I, and then I use your rags to. Yeah, I, pre I prefer boar snakes. And, and, yeah. But I do understand, you know, we talked about this offline. You got to have some way if they're in case, yes. you know, dirt or whatever uh, well, or gets in the bottom a, a of fail it. Fail to extract or anything strike, like that. Exactly. Boar snakes are nice and everybody's crazy about them. But, but like this one has the these things. rods. Yeah. That's the only way you're going to fix exactly. some malfunctions. All right, let's see what But those should have. be on your weapon. Right. Remember? So. Okay. And so. our metal container. So, folks, uh, this is the hardest thing in the woods to replicate <laughs> right here. Um, and for those of you that are like, I'll just make a burn bowl or I'll make a pinch pot, go do it. I'll wait. Like, it's going to take you a hot minute. And we've got some fuel tabs in here, Esbits. Yes, dear. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Or we could put this in there, which was made to help hold that. Oh, is that for? Um, yeah, just for just in case it gets hot. Okay. But I'm saying you have. Correct. Which I'm saying. Yep. I got you. That's it. For, that's all the stuff that's left in Damn Warshak test is this thing. There we go. All right. All right. So, um, sharpening stone, diamond. Okay. Again, big. Right. And I know you I, have I, a I, I, yeah. diamond card. Do right. the same thing this does. Less bulk, far less weight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, another Leatherman, um, just to have it in this pack as well. A um, couple More of like Kim sticks. sticks. Uh, this is my little camp stove, which I'm probably... Esbit? Uh, it can be used as esbit. It can oh, be used okay. as multi-fuel. All right. So um, it, it'll burn wood. It'll yep. burn anything you stick in Sure there. will. Okay. Uh, not too terribly hard to set up. It just kind of folds yep. out. Yeah, it comes with tender. My, and it comes with tender. And if you get your finger out of the way, it It'll works a whole lot better. Okay. So, and now this, this like that. is this the steel one? This is the steel one. Yep. So it's a little bit heavier. Yeah. You can get these in titanium to make it lighter. Um, but I'm a fan of having some sort of a stove. You're not always having to try to build an open fire. Right. And uh, Well, uh, you know, I was talking earlier today with uh, in the MSR. Uh, pocket rocket pocket stove. Pocket rocket stoves is probably what it's we're going to go to. we have in our rucks. Right. Um, the only problem with this is you will, you'll never heat anything on this with an Esbit tab. Correct. To, to any sort of a temperature. Exactly. So that's the only downside I see to this thing right now. 
but being able to burn wood or burn whatever and keep a small fire is a good thing. Plus, it, it's low signature, likewise. Correct. Correct. So, that's nice. I like that. Light sticks we already did, Gerber we already did. And we got uh, two, two knives. knives. And that one obviously means something. Yes, uh, this one was made by my wife's uncle. Um, he made it from a, uh, he worked in the coal mines up in Montana and he, the blades off of the uh, machines they use, he made the, knives out oh, of Oh really? So this one, oh, wow. you know, it's got a pretty nice saw blade on it. <laughs> Interesting little knife. And uh, it, will, it will bust a, a deer or an elk, it'll bust it right up the... Do you know, is, what is this, 1095, 1075? I have no clue. That is you know, he, interesting blade. That's nice. Yeah. So I mean, it, has, it has a saw blade on it, so kind of But again, dual purpose. we could do like, do we need both? Correct. Again, it's a weight thing. Oh, if you look absolutely. at the, if we got rid of all these packages, like uh, even the other leatherman tool, I would ditch. But if we got rid of all the packages, the sheaths, all the nylon stuff, obviously this one needs a sheath. But you see how much bulk now we're cutting oh, down. Yeah. We're starting to really, you're going to drop in some weight and your bag's going to be smaller. Right. So. And what's there. next in the big main body? And how many meals did you have? You have two? Two, two three. I got a three? third one right there. All right. And are you rotating these? And do you inspect them to make sure they're not full of holes? And uh, We did when we just repacked it before coming oh, down. So, go. All right, so this one, uh, we have a little water bottle, which right. uh, will be replaced with something that's a little more insulated. <laughs> and get yeah. rid of the little... Get uh, rid of the noise. Get rid of the noise. thing right there. We don't okay. want that. And we're not always... Guys, don't think we're always talking about this is a tactical environment thing. We're not pretending to be Carl here, but it's just sound discipline, light discipline, noise, all that stuff Absolutely. is a thing if we're operating in a non-permissive environment and we never know when we can find ourselves in one. Uh, the folks in Kenosha, Wisconsin didn't think they'd live in a non-permissive environment for a couple weeks and they found themselves in one. So we don't know when that'll happen. So if we prepare for that and we operate under that assumption, then we're going to be ready when it does come to exactly. us. So. Um, Little, and this uh, is always great. Little AR7, yep. um, 22 uh, rifle, single shot. Um, it supposedly floats. Yes, I have they yet do. To taste, I have yet to test that. They do float. But uh, along with the 22 yep, ammo. You got 100 rounds of ammo yep. right here. So that's a lot of groceries. It is. It is very much a lot, a lot of groceries. Of this, yeah. But yeah. I, I get why you got it. I'd have it too. So. Yeah. And then this is ammo. More ammo. Yeah. This is more uh, carry ammo. A little, another 100 rounds of 22 and some other so, ammo as well. So for these, you're carrying, which pistol are you carrying when you're doing well, this? Well, this was packed to carry my, uh, my Glock 19. Okay. And um, I believe those are actually for my Glock 30, the, the, so those 45s. Nine millimeter. Those are nine. So actually I have nine mils for my Glock 19. So nine and nine. So yeah, that's, that's a ton of ammo. Yeah. Um, Probably cut down at least I one box. I would lose both of these personally. Right. Okay. And, and again, like I said, and, and this is something that we go into, me and Alan Kay talk about a lot. We talk about it in the book, The Client of Decay. If you're having to use a, a weapon every day, I don't, I don't care if it's the end of the world. Let's just say the balloon's gone up and everything's gone south. And everybody wonders, how much ammo should I have? How much ammo should I have? And, and your guys are probably like me, all of it. That's how much I want. I want all the ammo. It's like lumens in a flashlight. I want all of them. But this is heavy. Yeah. And in, the, in a grid down situation, if we're using a, a weapon every day, be it a handgun or a right. rifle or a damn machete, um, Vegas is not going to give you good odds. No. You know? Exactly. Um, what we need to do, do is avoid the gunfight, avoid the confrontations. Um, and so most of us kind of go overboard on ammo, way more than we're ever going to need. Right. And, uh, if you've got 10,000 rounds of ammo that you're planning for the end of the world and you go through 10,000 rounds of ammo, you're not going to live long enough to shoot it all. I mean, if you're in that many gunfights, odds are you're just not going to do it. Right. Um, so I would I would cut weight wherever you could. Right. And this right here, I mean, Jesus, what is that, five pounds? Yeah, something like so, that. So, I mean, that, you can knock 10 pounds out of your ruck right. getting rid of those. But keep these. This is defense right. ammo. This is great. I would do that. And I carry, when I carry, um, I usually carry one, one, in the mat, one in the gun, one on my person, and two in, usually in like a cargo pocket in my... Yeah. Uh, my um, my Molly rack has room for four for magazines, magazines in addition to all the AR magazines okay. if I, if we go that far. If you go that far, and and what you could do too is if you dump this nine millimeter, I mean you've got two hundred rounds of twenty two in this thing. That's, right. that's a lot of ammo. If if you're worried or concerned, you could add another box right. of twenty two, lose the two nines. Right. Same round count. Yep. You know, 
um, but a hell of a lot lighter. quieter. And quieter and lighter. Yeah. All right, so now we're into the shelter system. Systems. Shelter systems. Okay, uh, just will mil be? military will be with a poncho. So, all right, sorry, and the poncho's in there with it? Yep, the poncho's so, right, 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 right here. Right here, there it is. I got it. Okay, now I see it. A little Marpat, all yeah. ready to go. Nice. And then this one is pretty heavy as well. Um, this is just a tarp. It's got some, uh, I think I can pull one out. Um, yellow plastic tent stakes mm -hmm. to help stake it down. Ah, oh, there's the last thing. The mosquito yeah, mosquito with a couple of bungee cords. That's and that makes perfect sense, especially in Florida uh, in the in summertime. South Carolina too. So, yeah, in South Carolina. <laughs> uh, one one recommendation I'd make on these, I'd lose these and get the little metal that are just uh, the aluminum little wire ones. Wire ones. Okay. Again, bulk. Okay. You know, and weight. Well, too. and I was thinking about it earlier today. Um, is while the tarp is great and it's heavy, but and it's heavy and protection from the ground. Maybe go with just some black plastic or something a little lighter. Well, now but, is this a ground cloth or is this a or is this your overhead shelter? Well, that's yes. You're gonna do both. Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay. My my goal with that is to put like a uh, put part of it on the ground and then, and then bring it angle up. it up. Okay. And that gives you your vapor barrier so that this Correct. thing's not getting soaking wet. Um, and the bungees are a good idea too. The only thing I only problem I have with these is number this kind is is that they are heavy like yes, you said they and they're also loud. These yeah, are, yeah. are very noisy, um, and that's not something I'm a huge fan of. Again, not that we're always work operating in a non-permissive environment, but sometimes we find ourselves doing that. Um, so that's it. overall, my first thing would be, I would say, work on your med kit. It's light. Right. Um, we, you know, you can put a tourniquet in there if you want, but for what this bag is really built for, honestly, you don't need one because if you need a tourniquet, yeah, you're not going to make it need, home You're anyway. not going to need the bag anymore. Anyway. Um, you know more of the boo-boo stuff because you know you consider <laughs> i'm on foot now yeah look at you i'm on foot now and and i'm not used to always being on foot and having to walk from here to yon you may be doing it in a non-permissive environment you may be doing it at night you're going to be handling knives and tools and you're going to be dealing with fire and stuff so it's going to be the little things burns like you didn't have anything in here for a burn whatsoever right you need to get some stuff for burns for sure um and and the scratches the cuts you, you had uh sanitizer and things like that yeah little chip and stuff appointment. like that you know, and if you can get prescription antibiotics, if you have some at home, oh, right. tin those up or bag them into something separate, mark what they are, put the date on them too, and add those in. The only folks at home, if you have antibiotics, you know, prescription grade stuff that you want to add to your kit, that's great. Penicillin, things like that. Stay away from the doxycyclines, the tetracyclines, things like that, because they do go bad and they can be lethal when they go bad. Um, the other stuff, you know, amoxicillins, all those, right. you, you might have to titrate it if they're, if they're losing potency, right. but they're not going to kill you. Um, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's and, a good thing. That's, you know, the other thing that I do have to add in here is my personal meds that I have to take due to the transplant. And exactly. I want to have probably at least a week's worth at minimum, but you know when you're dealing with trying to get prescriptions, it's hard to stockpile. It is. I gotta take it. <laughs> unless you get, unless you can get a good doc that will like write you an extra. Script I'm working on it. That you know, and there are some out there that'll do it. You know, another thing that that you in your tool department, you've got quite a few tools. You know, you've got another Leatherman tool and no, these, these, these two. These two. Oh, these are both here. Okay. Yeah. So. I would, I would cut one of these out and one of the blades and I would add a small folding saw because you have no okay. way here to process wood to make a fire. Right. Um, a hatchet and an ax, they're great, they got a place, they're also more dangerous to use. Correct. Especially if you're stressed, hungry, tired, sleep deprived, the whole thing, and mildly dehydrated. A saw is really hard to chop your fingers off with. Uh, so something like a little silky boy, doesn't have to be a big one. Uh, but something that'll let you process some wood, you know. Well, I only, I only did it once. Yeah, I know, you only did it once, yeah, exactly. But I mean, overall, you've got a pretty nice kit. The, another one thing I would recommend would be uh, so either use some of the black bags you have right. to waterproof some of the stuff, right. like your clothing okay. and your sleep that's system. A, okay, that's a good point. Because you know, being able to have someplace warm and dry to sleep at night, that's gonna be critical. If your whole entire sleep system's wet, you're, you're screwed. Right. And if it's winter time um, and it's cold out, or worse, it's cold and wet, two entirely different environments, folks. Um, you need to be able to warm yourself up. So having dry clothes that you can put on and a dry something to sleep in okay. is gonna keep you alive. Mm -hmm. um, regulating that core temp, that's the thing. So, but yeah, overall, you're, you're not in too bad a shape. Couple little things, I would, I would, like I said, peel out some of the packaging right. and 
trim your tools down and trade, you know. Yeah, trade a couple Two of these of for, say, a saw, okay. and, and you'll be in pretty good business. Yeah. And, and work on that med kit. I mean, that, that's something that banding materials, tape, waterproof dressings, um, occlusive dressings if you can find them. Right. And I didn't see, did you have any eye patch stuff in there? I did not. You did not, because that's right. a legit thing, too. Exactly. I know you wear glasses, yeah. but shit happens. Okay. So, yeah, and like with the Gerber's, I had one, one of these came out of the... The, the inch bag, the, you know, the drop it in run. Yep. And uh, um, the other one came out of here. A signal mirror. I didn't see a signal no. mirror anywhere in here. Get one of those too. Okay. Because it's not just for signaling. Correct. It's, is yeah. there a tick on my ass? <laughs> that is a tick. Is that a bowl? Oh, that's a tick. All right, I can deal with that. You know, and they're very helpful. Too, when I was talking about the eye bandage, that's what made me think of the, the signal mirror because if you get an eye injury, you, right. with your signal mirror and your good eye, you can look at your bad eye, you know? Right. It'll, it's a, it's a self-diagnosing tool, really okay. more than anything else. But overall, you're not bad. I would, I would cut a little bit and add, add one or two things there, like I'm talking about, and you're in pretty, pretty solid shape. Okay. Definitely, though, I would lose. Yeah, lose that, that nine. You, well, dude, you're not going to shoot that much. Maybe I can use it much. this weekend. There you so. go. Range right there. <laughs> so, anyway, this is this is Russ's bag. None of us are perfect either, guys. Oh, I mean, absolutely. You, you know, anybody could go through my bag and be like, "Why the hell are you carrying this?" Uh, Alan Kay does it to me all the time. Um, but uh, we have to. You know, our rucks are like our, our shoes, our guns, and our cars. They have to fit us. Um, and, and what's right for us isn't right for me. Um, so we have to build these, you know, to our needs, our environment and everything, our skill level. Um, but overall, you're pretty good shape. And my wife's bag is very similar. She has almost exactly the same good. stuff. Uh, trying to standardize yep. a little bit. That way we put one bag in one car, one bag in the other. And we know between, the, between us what we have in here, we're okay. Yep. If we have both bags, her, her she doesn't have the can she doesn't have the tarp. She right. actually has a little small two person, a little one person tent. Okay. And that's all we need if there's two of us because yep. one of them is going to be up at all times. Exactly. Yep. So, exactly. I appreciate it, man. I mean, this was awesome. No I've worries, been trying man. to get you to You do have been this asking me to do this for two, two weeks years. now. Well, two weeks since you've been here, so. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think, Carl? All right. Um, yeah, it, it goes back to uh, just your basic list of what are all the basics of survival mm -hmm. and uh, cut weight. Cut, cut weight. Cut weight. But you got to you got to check all the blocks, ne neglecting things. Mirror, very very important. Very important. One thing I like is um, you know people talk about bringing Vaseline, uh, you know the, the the little cotton balls mm -hmm. dipped in Vaseline. Yep. I don't use Vaseline anymore. I use um, the ophthalmic antibiotic cream because not purpose. only it's instead of purpose. doing, right. you know, it, bacitration or neomycin for yeah. a cut, and you mentioned that, have yeah. that also, by using the ophthalmic grade antibiotic, now I can still use it on a cut, but I can also use it that eye injury, yeah, right. and it is petroleum based. So now I can yeah, also absolutely. use it for that's a great idea. burning. So that's a great idea. there's lots of little stuff, and that's uh, that's you know sitting back. You great stuff here. Chris brings up a lot of things that I would not even sharpshooted you on at all. Uh, but I agree, and you guys know I'm a gun guy. I'm definitely a gun we guy. We all are. Oh, yeah, we but, all are. But uh, uh, yeah, if you're you've got. A, a double basic load for Mogadishu here. Well, and, <laughs> and, basic and, and, and part of it is like, you know, we were saying, you know, we have one bag in my car, one bag in my wife's car. So that's enough ammo for two people. Right. Because yeah. she also carry, she carries a Glock 43 yep. until I can go home and afford to get her the Glock 19, 19. that she wants. Yeah. Because yep. uh, she liked mine. Yep. Um, so that was one of the reasons that we had that much ammo. She has the same amount in her bag. So if we're a, a solitary system, yes, we don't quite have enough food for two people. Well, but you, we you, can make do, hopefully. You can make do, and in, in, in that vein, the only thing you have for food procurement is this right here. So, uh, so uh, and this well, is, I, I was gonna say <laughs> this, but maybe the, everybody gets hung up on trap and snare and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. You're not gonna do, if you're on the move, you don't have the yeah, time to do that. Time. You're not going to be trapping and snaring anything. Um, this is gonna be getting your groceries for you. Or the stuff that's easy to, to catch. Correct. Plants, they don't run, you know, yeah. bugs, insects, that kind of thing. People get all grossed out about plants it. Plants don't run. Plants don't run. They don't run. They're pretty easy to catch. I mean, you, know, you got to sneak up on them. I mean, you know, but you got to have that knowledge too. Yeah. So you got to know what you're looking at. Um, so I would consider, I would think about your food just a little bit because, um, I mean, this will get protein for sure. 
but study, you're in South Carolina, so study some of the edible plants Correct. for your region, your area where you're operating in, right. and pick out a couple that are common that are yeah. just freaking everywhere. Yeah, we have cattails all over the place. There you go. There's uh, one, yeah. right? So get, I, got, I learned that from your book. Get four more, you know, find four more. Now you got right. five plants, you know, that as you're moving around, you can be like, well, I can eat that. Because if we're walking, we're, we're trying to get to, from, home, whatever it is, bugging out, we're going to do like the animals do, like the deer. We're going to eat on the move. We're going to graze as we yeah. walk by. We're going right. to pull that green briar tip off and eat it as we're walking along. And maybe blackberry leaves or blackberries if we're lucky or whatever. Right. So knowing the plants that you can eat that are in your AO are, is a big deal for, for sure. staying alive anyway. Awesome. All right, Chris, uh, where did you get uh, the book name... Title name A America. Oh, the author name. So, <laughs> well, Russ well, was there. What happened was. What happened was, uh, I, it was just a username on a forum, and you know, it, it cracked me up because people would be like, "You spelled angry wrong." I'd be like, "No, I spelled it that way on purpose." And 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 dude, your name is you know something else, and it doesn't spell like it. You know, yeah. I, I once read a quote that said, "You cannot misspell a name." Like if you're making a name, you can't misspell it because that's the name you gave something. Yeah. So there's, it's not yeah. misspelled. But it was just my username. And uh, when I wrote going home on the forum, yeah. that's how everybody knew me. Nobody knew my name. And when the insistent, never ceasing bastards insisted that I publish the book, which I did not want to do. book. Thank you guys for pushing me because I did not want to publish it. Uh, I just published it under that name because nobody knew my name. Yeah. And they would have never found it. The, so the original hardbacks and, and paperbacks that are out there of the first edition say Angry American on the front of it. No, they're real. Mm -hmm. I'll show you one. I got one in the house. Okay. When Penguin came along, they're like, look, we got to talk about this name. We're not putting that on the front of a book. <laughs> so it became A American. So I was like, how about A American? And they're like, we can live with that. We can live with that. <laughs> Funny shit. All right, dude. I, Chris shook your shit out. He yeah, didn't he pull did. any punches. No, he did. And uh, but constructive criticism is how we get better. That's it. Yeah. Uh, dude, Absolutely. thanks for letting them beat hey, up your stuff problem. for all my viewers out there on the internet. Oh, and, absolutely. And uh, Chris, thank you. Bro. Words of wisdom, and without a doubt, guys, uh, Chris is great. People, uh, we've hit it off real good. Uh, Like-minded uh, individuals. We want to truly make capable, uh, concerned citizens and the capable citizens. Yep. Guys, there's a storm on the horizon. Yes, there yeah. is. Yes, there uh, is. Um, if you could get that note held right there that said, you're gonna have a, your heart attack in two weeks. Trust me, you'd be busting your ass out for two weeks. I'm giving you your notice right now. Storms are on the horizon yeah. and the weatherman that's said right, you need man. to be preparing. So Chris Weatherman, Super again, bro. brother, dude, uh, thanks for everything. Thanks for you guys coming down. It's been an honor having you guys here, even Emory. I mean, it's been great. Uh, you don't got to push it for me, man. You don't. I'm just you saying. Don't push it's, it. you know. All right. All right. Um, you guys know the deal. Leave the comments below. All right. And uh, I read all of them. I will pass your comments on to Chris. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.